been gone for a while. Um, I've taken a little break, a vacation, a bit of a holiday. Um, been working quite hard recently, spending a bit of time with the family, and there's been a um, sporting event that I wanted to watch as well and enjoy. Um, so thank you for some of your comments on here, much appreciated. Anyway, um, I've had a number of videos to bring to you, but this one fell on my fell in my lap, so I, I couldn't resist not to um, bring this one to you. Um, out at my local library um, this, this morning with my daughter, and um, just happened to bump into Dr. Mason. Um, probably not familiar with this chap. Um, he's um, an astrophysicist, and he works alongside Sir Patrick Moore. Um, one is hoping that he's more familiar to yourselves. Um, if he's not, here's a clip coming up shortly um, of uh, these two gentlemen in the British Astronomical Association. Um, a very well published um, um, astrophysicist, um, many peer to peer reviews, um, he's a well documented um, scientist, physicist, and I've had a chance to meet with him personally twice. Um, but I've seen about 12 of his lectures to date, with another one coming up in the next six to eight weeks. But I'm going to meet him, meet him personally in the next few weeks, which would be fantastic. Um, the last time we spoke, it was around evolution of the universe, and uh, you know he's obviously a very highly intellectual um, gentleman. Um, I, had to, I had to keep up with the conversation, um, so I had to be on, on my toes throughout. Um, but he's obviously very knowledgeable about um, how the you know, um, university evolved, etc. Um, and, and I happened to mention about it being you know, a perfect um, universe, um, which he asked, well, what do I mean by perfect universe? To which I said, um, well, we're uh, yeah, so far from the sun um, and life's here on this planet, etc. And he said, um, well, Basically, this isn't a perfect universe by all means. It's more of a sort of slightly order out of chaos, to be honest. And if it wasn't for this chaos, we wouldn't exist. And um, you know, if it was a perfect universe, which if there was a creator creating it, it wouldn't be created as it is because it was it's so it's so random. I mean, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of nuclear explosions going off um, in deep space, um, obviously. Out of out of sight from our, our vision, or or capturing some of these um, supernovas, etc. Um, but when I meet up with him in the next few weeks, um, I should be obviously speaking a bit a little bit more on that subject, and obviously I'm trying to bring in a bit more sort of on the molecular biology level as well. Um, to which when I first mentioned that um, a couple of years ago, he was uh, quite quite keen and. Um, appreciated the level of um, biology that we are now achieving. Um, so I just thought I'd bring you this video. Um, I would say watch this space, you know, excuse the pun, um, but whether I can get some footage of um, of us together, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but I think it's quite cool. I mean, I would like to say I, I kind of know him, if I, you know, obviously met him today in the library and He's very familiar with you know, with my face in, in the audience, etc., in some of the lectures. So to go up to him and speak to him and stuff like that, and he's totally cool. And um, you know, next, next time I meet him, we'll be on a sort of first name basis, I hope. So that'd be that'd be quite nice. Um, but anyway, I'm going to finish now of the um, of of Dr. Mason and Sir Patrick Moore um, in a sort of live broadcast when they were doing. Um, one of their functions of the British Astronomical Association, BAA, not the BAA with regards to the airports, you understand, um, but this is, you know, this is astrophysicists at their very best, and um, like I said, you know, he's a peer-reviewed scientist, um, many, many publications, um, one of the best in the world, um, and, he, and, and um, yeah, some of the lectures I've been to, I must, I must just bring this to you before I finish, um, you all know about the Northern Lights, yeah. Um, he's done a fantastic um, lecture on the Northern Lights, and he's been chasing them for years um, up in Norway. Um, so, very knowledgeable man. Um, I always find him quite approachable. Um, on many occasions that I've met, I'll meet him again in the next few weeks. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, I can sleep tonight. Um, one hope I do. 
Um, but I'll leave with this clip now, and I'll uh, see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Lots. Finally, thank you to Sir Patrick for coming to join us today, and I think you'd like to say just a few more words. If I may, can I take your time for a minute or so? After all, I've seen so much, all through the BA of the Tabernacle. And when I joined, the world was a very different place. With no television, no electronics, almost no radio. I remember trying to tune my radio and listen in to the fest calls in Australia and with all the interviews. A different country, it was all together. A different country. We were governed by ourselves. Our House of Commons governors, filled with honest politicians, not the pregnant bunch of crooks. <laughs> <laughs> the skies were darker. Now that I was trying hello. And I'd like to say, first of all, I don't think all of you realise how much influence the BAA has had all over here but all over the world. So thank you all, thank you very much, and clear skies to you all. Thank you. Do you think it's possible, given that what's happened in the last even 10 years in amateur astronomy, is there anything you think, what do you think might be a big leap in the future or the next great advance for amateur astronomy? Well, the point is that really amateur, hard to say. amateur work now can match professional work of many years ago, not so, not so many years ago. I mean, the, I've got a picture of Vers of Saturn taken with my telescope, not only by me, but with my telescope outdoors. That's far better than any telescope would have done when I began the sky at night, but it beat the Panama pictures from there. And it can be done now, so amateur work has, has, has come to the fore. And I think it's going to go on, because also professionals need it for things the professional either can't do, haven't got time to do, or don't want to do. And your amateur professional, you know better than I do, doesn't know the sky very well. Indeed not. I think you've had some calls from professional astronomers over the years, I haven't you? I had one call <laughs> from a well known professional who I'm not going to name, who just discovered an interesting mover. And you're about to bring up with the RTO. And I said, I'm with the star. Yes, sir. Got sales behind there. Get one. And look at your new star. I'm afraid this got rigged. He made a completely independent discovery of Saturn. Dear, dear, dear.